This is the Barbados Today afternoon news for Friday, June 16. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Police are seeking the public's assistance in locating two wards of the government industrial school who absconded while attending the child guidance clinic at the Branford Tate Polyclinic in Black Rock on Wednesday. They are 16-year-old Trakida Worrell and a 14-year-old minor. Worrell is about 5 feet 5 inches tall, brown-skinned with small eyes. At the time of her disappearance, her hair was styled in cornrows. The 14-year-old is about 5 feet tall, petite and brown-skinned. Her hair is also styled in cornrows. Anyone with information on their whereabouts is asked to contact the Black Rock Police Station at 417-7500 or the police emergency number 211, the nearest police station, or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-TIPS. That's 1-800-8477. Owners and operators of public service vehicles are renewing their calls for an increase in bus fares. In a letter dated June 14, addressed to Finance Minister Chris Sinclair, the owners asked for no less than a 50% hike. This means passengers would pay $3 per trip, up from $2. Their demand comes on the heels of budgetary measures announced by Sinclair last month, including an increase in the excise duty on gas and diesel. President of the Association of Public Transport Operators, Morris Lee, tells Barbados Today the operators cannot afford to absorb the additional costs at this time. Over the last three years, we have been very concerned about the state of the industry from a financial perspective. And after what we heard in this year's budget presentation, we are even more concerned mm -hmm. because the industry is about to be hit with some unprecedented challenges given the proposed spike in the cost of doing business. But Lee says there will be no need for increased fares if the minister can provide alternatives to assist PSV owners and operators. The government could look at some kind of buffer in order to assist the Operators, it could be in, in, in the form of the fuel that we purchase. It could be in, for, in the form of the the high road taxes that we pay. There, there, there are many creative ways that the that the finance minister to look at doing that without necessarily running straight to a, a, a fair increase. Mm -hmm. So we leave the options up to him. Tourism Minister Richard Seeley is encouraging the private sector to join in government's redecoration of Bridgetown. Addressing a town hall meeting at the Barbados Workers' Union's headquarters last night, Seeley said there are fiscal incentives for private investors to get involved in the 20 million U.S. dollar program, which is funded by the Inter-American Development Bank. I should make a call for the private sector to, 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 to come on board as we do this exercise. We are doing the, the, um, the work from the government point of view in terms of, again, the, the sidewalks, the public amenities, greenscaping, some public spaces, etc. But there's an excellent opportunity for the private sector, the owners of private property and businesses in Bridgetown to come on board. And remember, there are concessions available under the SDA, Special Development Areas, and for that matter, even if you're slightly outside of that, the geographical area to benefit from that, you can still get TDA, the Tourism Development Act, because again, it's a ranked tourism project. Once it is a tourism project, you can enjoy that. So I want to encourage them. There's regional and international news after this short break. Morning, Miss Oya. Morning, you again. So you're washing cars now. Well, I can't keep up with you at all. Yes, girl, you know they've got provision to sell it slow. Mm. And I don't sell nation newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I'm washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It's clean. But you're going in very early, though? Yeah, I'm just going early so I can read the bar better today online before work starts. Right. Well, you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I've got a special boo here that I've got it showing me. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh. You too. All right. What that paper is? 
she can see clearly when the dirt is gone. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. Thank you for staying with us. We're back now with news from the region. The Hubert Minnis administration in the Bahamas is undertaking an overhaul of the education system. And this includes a review of contracts issued by the previous government addressing overcrowding in public schools and the demolition of old buildings. We get the details from ZNS Network News in Nassau. As the government continues its audit of government agencies, Education Minister Jeff Lloyd in Parliament Thursday detailed employment contracts within the Ministry of Education that he said were made with more than 300 persons between December 2016 and the May 10th general elections. Lloyd said those hired expected long-term employment, but their contracts will end in 15 days. And while there are claims of victimization, Lloyd said the former government is to blame. But what is unfair is to these people. This is where it is unfair. These are the people who are being victimized. They're not properly trained. They're not properly vetted. They don't go through the process. They're not determined if they are needed. There are no uh, uh, identified vacancies that, that they fill. They're entering into various departments for which they are for, that the department isn't ready to receive them, for which there are no job responsibilities for them. Now, the education minister also detailed a multi-million dollar contract entered into by the former administration for the lease of the former Bahamas Academy site on Wolf Road, owned by the Bahamas Conference. Lloyd said that even though construction is underway, that contract is under review. And on the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump is moving to tighten restrictions on Americans traveling to Cuba. There are also plans to clamp down on U.S. business dealings with the military in Havana. The move will roll back parts of former President Barack Obama's historic thawing of relations between the two countries. We get more in this Reuters report. Trump promised a tougher approach on the campaign trail and says he wants to prevent U.S. money from reaching the hands of what his administration sees as an oppressive regime. Reuters' Sarah Marsh has been getting the reaction from Havana. For Cubans in the tourism sector, it's their livelihoods at stake. Tourism has boomed in the past two and a half years since the United States and Cuba announced that they were normalizing relations. The number of American visitors has tripled since then. For Cubans who work at B&Bs and restaurants, that's been good news. They say that Americans consume most and pay most. And now they're worried that increased travel restrictions will mean that not as many will be coming to Cuba. Sources say the new plan won't touch existing tourism deals like the one that was struck under Obama by Starwood Hotels. And U.S. airlines and cruise lines to the island will likely be exempt. That may be comfort for some, but for other Cubans, it's about more than money. And that's the afternoon news. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can find us on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Have a good afternoon.